Drought conditions are a sign of the times across the western United States. You know, we've had a bit of relief the last couple of years here in Idaho, but it's not unusual for states like Idaho to suffer through several seasons of very dry skies. They say you can't control the weather. They also say you reap what you sow. But what if you could do both? It's something scientists have toyed with for years, kind of helping the hydrological outlook a bit with a little encouragement. It's commonly referred to as cloud seeding, and it's gotten a lot more efficient and practical over the years. The North American Weather Modification Council, they were in Boise today to help educate resource managers, policymakers, and of course, us in the media about how this whole thing works. Joe Paris spoke with one of those water managers about how it does work. Joe? Well, this isn't new, Brian, and uh, cloud seeding has actually been going on for decades. Locally here in Idaho, it dates back to the 1990s. It was developed as a concept from the 90s until 2003 when it went into practice. And you may not know this, Idaho Power pioneered that locally and they maintain the programs till this day. Then in 2008, the state of Idaho really started to buy in. So. Just to be clear, Idaho has a different approach to cloud seeding than other areas of the country. The goal in the gem state is to create a greater snowpack that eventually melts off in the spring. Snow is the goal here. Rain is the goal in other places. And we spoke with Kayla Golden. She's a leader with the Idaho Department of Water Resources cloud seeding program, and she kind of explains the backdrop of the event today. I think it's very important that folks become educated on cloud seeding um, because a lot of folks just don't really know what it is. Uh, the science uh, has been evolving for quite some time. Cloud seeding has been occurring uh, since about 1946, uh, but we really didn't prove the conceptual model that it actually works uh, until about five years ago. And so now that we've demonstrated through science that it works, there's been a massive growth in interest. Idaho Power is the, is the operator of the program, uh, and then the state and local water users provide funding to support the program. Uh, and so I think that, that three-legged stool or that, that mechanism uh, is, what, is what has made our program so successful. All right, so there's some background. How about some of the big questions on this topic? How well does it work? Does cloud seeding have negative impacts? How is cloud seeding used to manage water in the state of Idaho? Well, these are all things that Kayla and other resource managers, they want people to know at home. So first, does cloud seeding work in Idaho? Absolutely. I would say on average, you know, we have a good 20 years worth of data for our operational cloud seeding programs here in Idaho. Uh, and across all basins, we see about an average of 10% increase in our annual precipitation uh, in all basins where we operate. So that's a pretty, pretty significant amount of water, uh, especially in times of need when we do have water shortages. Cloud seeding does not generate weather. We can only use the existing weather that's in the sky kind of work to enhance it. Yes, yeah, so we're essentially working to wring out more water from the sky, water that's already there. We do believe that it is safe. Uh, there is not any known environmental impacts of cloud seeding. Uh, and the reason for that is because the seeding mechanism that we use, uh, silver iodide is considered to be inert in the natural environment. So really what we're doing is just enhancing the natural precipitation. So, Brian, uh, as for many topics, public education matters because as you get into science and weather, some people get a little concerned. And, of course, there are conspiracy theories. So right. to educate policymakers and resource managers, getting them the facts, it helps empower them in the conversations moving forward. Yeah, the conspiracy theories you talk about, manipulating the environment and stuff like that. Obviously, that takes some, you know, some education of certain people to make them really understand what is happening. Yeah, and it, it is a high-level science thing, so it is interesting. All right, thanks, Joe.